Hello! It's time for a book haul. Yes, it is. I have no idea we were dancing at that moment, but I'm. Because book hauls are great. So there. Yes, they are. All right, cool. So book haul time. It is the jo June. June book haul. June. It is the June book haul. And we really have to. Quite a few. Yeah. Good. Get started because there's so many books. So without much further ado. Okay. Take it away, Lex. So I'm gonna start with talking about the books that we got as gifts or yes. you know other stuff like that. We're actually gonna start with a book that we got from someone who watches our channel. Yes. Uh, from Danny. Hello, Danny. Uh, she sent us this pristine edition of a German edition of. Harry Potter because she lives in Switzerland, I want to say. There is yes. a nice note in there. Yeah, for me sweetest and note ever. It was really cute. It's Danny D. That's her username. I'm really excited about this because as you guys know, like I collect Harry Potter ones, so this is incredible and I'm so, so grateful. Yeah, so thank you for that. Alexa told me the story of sort of how they got... Yeah, you, it's, you know, it's amazing. They got to talking. It was just really great, so super sweet. And we're very grateful. Yeah, one of the highlights of the month, actually. Oh, yeah, for sure. And all the next books came from Kristen from Super Space Chick because she's... Yes, our benefactor. She's our benefactor. So she is lending me, or, well, she gave to me these volumes of Happy Marriage. So it's 3 to 10, which is the rest of the series, because we both enjoy the series. It's not necessarily one we either of us really see ourselves rereading in the future. So she was like, I'm going to share mine with you so you can read the rest of it do with it what you will and so Fair. that's how I ended up with this. Happy Marriage is basically the story of a office worker who ends up married to the CEO of her company in this arranged marriage because she needs the money that she's going to get out of that in order to help her dad pay off his debts. The relationship is a non-existent at the beginning but then they start getting to know each other and develop feelings and shenanigans. On and on and on. We got two more things from Kristen. First we have Sorcery of Thorns, which is by Margaret Rogerson. She gave me this finished copy, which is beautiful. Sorcery of Thorns is about Elizabeth who wants to become a librarian. And that is because she has spent her entire life in a library. She's grown up there. And one day she's implicated in a murder that happens at the great library she lives at. And so she is taken to the capital to be brought to justice. The person who takes her to the capital is a sorcerer. And Elizabeth has been told all her life to fear or fear or be wary of sorcerers but the two of them uncover this secret plot and have to work together to save the day and it's great awesome and Kristen also gifted us with a finished copy of ghost of the shadow market which is by cassandra claire sarah reese brennan maureen johnson kelly link and robin wasserman and all of these stories center around brother zachariah slash jim carstairs and they're great they're wonderful got Excellent a lot of feelings book. it's very informational if you want to learn more about the last hours gang and if you want to see more of the direction this series is going to take post Queen of Air and Darkness, also very informational. So it's a definitely, great setup for what's coming. I just want to call out uh, some of my digital pur purchases. Pur purposes. <laughs> purposes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, because as usual, Comicsology goes on sale every so often, and since I am, and Mac uh, goes click click, and I go clickety click. It, it was a huge Superman sale, so I was able to get Superman Earth One volumes one and two. Very very cool. To this day, I want this hoodie that you see right now on on, on uh, Earth One. I think this is what um, the Henry Cavill Superman was sort of trying to do, okay. and that it was a little more realistic. But I feel like this did it a little better. Mm -hmm. And so that's pretty cool. I also was able to get Superman Elseworlds Volume 1. Why I, did I get that particular volume, not everything else, even if everything else was on sale? Because this was the one that has uh, that short, kind of, I want to say four issue, five issue, whatever, mini series called Speeding Bullets, where uh, Cal L's ship landed in Gotham City at, the Wayne, at Wayne Manor instead. That's an interesting arc. So can you imagine him growing up to be Batman? Which is the scariest Batman you'll ever find because it's Batman with Kryptonian powers. And I think he's named Bruce in this one. I was able to get Super Sons Volume 3 and Super Sons uh, um, of Tomorrow. I don't know what that means, but I need it. Because, because it's Super Sons. Because it's Super Sons. The Super Sons centers around uh, Damian Wayne, who is now the Robin to Batman's, you know, like little Kate Crusader duo type, type deal. Also Bruce Wayne's son. And then we introducing John Kent, uh, who is the son of uh, Clark Kent and Lois Lane. And he's the biggest cinnamon roll. Like he says, like he's like he feels bad if he says "damn." He's, he's so in cute. jeans and he has like a shirt hoodie cape thing. thing, which is just he's great. So cute. He's the cutest. Like he, he's a cinnamon roll. He and is easily one of the most powerful cinnamon rolls in the history of cinnamon rolls. Because guess what? Kryptonian DNA. I know, right? So he may be half human, but he's uh, all hero. Anyway. Oh my so, god! I love that. 
I don't know, that just came out. So that was fun and looking forward to reading those. I actually forgot to include this one in the other <laughs> section, but Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This was a gift from my friend DJ. Red, White, and Royal Blue is essentially a romantic comedy that is about the son of the President of the United States and the Prince of England. And they end up having to fake a friendship after they do this thing that gets a lot of media attention and not the good kind and so they sort of become tentative friends and then it eventually blossoms into something more and it is wonderful one of my favorite books i've read this year i'm done with the stuff that i got now it's time for alexa to talk about the stuff yes, that, that i bought you bought so actually i bought this through kristen because i wasn't uh -huh. able to attend the event because i like you guys know i've been sick for most of june so the beholder by anna bright this is her debut fantasy novel and it is about a girl who ends up being sent on a sort of bachelor type quest sort of she has to meet all these potential suitors and then pick one basically that's essentially what it is but there's also something else unfolding behind all of that and that is what this is about wicked fox by cat cho this was delightful it is set in seoul korea and it is about myung who is the main character and she is a gumiho which means she's a nine-tailed fox as they are called in korean mythology and she loses her fox speed which means that her abilities are slowly on the decline and so she has to figure out a way to get it back in <laughs> to her and it's great it's wonderful it's perfect for people who actually enjoy animes and k-dramas because i swear it plays out exactly like one so definitely check this out we went to kinokuniya i picked up two books there's nana volume one which is by ayazawa i have read this series it's basically about two girls named nana who eventually cross paths become roommates a lot of shenanigans ensue it's a great series i really enjoy it even though it's unfinished <laughs> and then we have the first volume of Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. Oh, I should have taken out all the volumes, but really I bought volumes 1 to 8 of Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. And this is about the main character Hinana. She is by day, or by most of her classmates, they know her as like a good model student who is very realistic and, you know, has her goals laid out for her. But really, one of her main things is that she wants to fall in love or get swept away in her own love story. And it actually happens when this celebrity named Kei Dayase comes to their school to film part of his film. She gets to be like an extra in the cast because she's part of the student council. They have an encounter. Things happen. It's great. It's a little over the top in terms of what goes on as the series progresses, but it's still so much fun and I love it so much. 12-year-old Alexa is like dying with delight. So. That's delightful. Then we have this beautiful anniversary edition of Graceling by Kristen Kishore. Oh, that's a story of uh, Look at that. Katza, who has a particular grace that allows her to, I believe, it's murder people. Yes. It's yeah. It's efficiently kill efficiently people. Efficiently kill people. Um, it's been a very long time since I read it, actually. So I'm now looking forward to doing so because this is one of the fantasy books that I read. Like it's actually really good. It really good. It's really, really it's good. It's probably my favorite in the series. It's yours too, right? Agreed. Yes. This edition actually sort of matches that. It's the also an anniversary edition of The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. <sighs> the Name of the Wind is about Kvothe. He is an innkeeper and he is being prompted to tell his story and so this entire first book is just the one day where he tells the first part of his story and it's so good. The next couple of books I've bought because I have this project coming up that I am really excited about and I hope you guys will be too. So we have a Babysitter's Club book. This is super special number 14, uh, BSC super in the USA. Special. And it is the one where they all go on this road trip together like their families go on the road trip together so much fun then we have island of the blue dolphins which is by scott odell i loved this story growing up i cannot tell you how many times i read it it's about a young girl who gets left behind on this island that is off the coast of california i think her entire clan leaves and they sail east and she gets left behind so she just stays there and waits for them to come back like she survives on her own there and ugh, this story is still so good in my mind I haven't read it in ages though. Then another survival story, Hatchet by Gary Paulson. Uh, this one is a 13 year old kid who gets stranded, um, I think. it's the, I think his plane crashes and he has to survive in the forest on his own. Crazy. These are the things that my mom gave to me to read when I was a child, okay? Maybe she just wanted me to be prepared to survive on my own should something happen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I really enjoy this as a kid. I also reread it a lot of times. And we have a Nancy Drew. This is number 32, The Scarlet Slipper Mystery. I have a lot of these editions in the Philippines. My mom actually owned them before I did, uh, which is incredible. But this is one of my favorite mysteries because it involves a dancer. Cool. Just a brief segue uh, before we go into the review books and Alexa sort of gets started cracking uh, you know, and, and doing the thing. I just want to bring out City of Mist. I was able to get the special edition sort of slipcase that has both the you know the Game Master's toolkit. Uh, it comes with I want to say uh, uh, also a, a 
Um, turn it. Game, game Master screen, right? Ah, sort love. of, sort of uh, helps stuff, and it's got beautiful, beautiful art yeah, as you can it's see. Gorgeous. Uh, it's a tabletop RPG uh, developed by um, I want to say Son of Oak Game Studios, and uh, you know it comes in a beautiful slipcase. It was one of those special edition type deals where you get like extra accessories and what have you, and it's basically a game where. It's an urban setting, you've got a bunch of characters that have sort of like a legendary aspect to them, whether it's from a god or a legendary creature, and it's just you solving cases and crimes mm -hmm. in, in, in like this big noirish city. That's fun. So uh, again, drawing inspiration from this for some of my projects where, you know, <laughs> there you go. Uh, and so, hence the need for having some kind of inspiration. I guess it's review book time now? It is absolutely book time. So we are going time. to do the thing where I will tell you quickly about books that I have never heard of that I got in the mail. And we're just going to quickly talk about them. I like the title of this one though. It makes me think of Waitress. Life, Love, and the Pursuit of Happiness which is by Sandra Hill. Now I want pie. And this says on the top, Welcome to Bell Cove, North Carolina. Independence Day may have just passed in the small Outer Banks town known for its famous bells, but one ex-Navy SEAL has a declaration of his own to make. Uh, okay, I'm cool. in, I'm in. Then we have A Lady in Disguise, which is by Lindsay Sands, and this one says, It's a case of mistaken identities and unmistakable attraction. Then we have Her Other Secret by Helen K. J Jim Diamond? I'm oh, sorry, Helen K. Diamond. First of all, they have a guy with glasses on the cover. It seems like this one is a bit more thrillery because there's a killer aspect to it, like a li li like an actual killer aspect to it. So there's that. And then we have Some Like It Scandalous by Maya Rodal. They're sworn enemies pretending to be lovers and now it's time to kiss and make up. So um, only got a couple of books in the mail that I feel, uh, of course they're all sent to Alexa. <laughs> mostly 99% are sent. I have like one every so often, but um, but these were the ones that sort of felt like they would be in my wheelhouse. So I want to start with Aftershocks by Marco Kluse, uh, author of the Frontline series. It's one of those epic sci-fi deals that where like. sort of like a person is caught in between like, you know, a new sort of civil war that's happening. He's been on the bad side of the war before, but now he has to come back to like a brutal lifestyle that he has to have. So very interested to see what actually this this is like. So got got some pretty good uh, Reviews, or at least blurbs on the uh, on the other hand, so we'll see what that looks like. And then uh, to sort of round off the non middle grade books, which we'll save for later, uh, this is called Life Is Short and Then You Die. This is an anthology of of sort of mystery stories, and if you'll see like R. L. Stein's name somewhere written on That's here, awesome. so a bunch of authors: uh, Y. S. Lee, I mean Laybourne, Kelly Armstrong, Rachel Vincent. So very very fun. We'll see what that little collection of short stories is like. That's the brief little blurb there. So now I'm going to quickly run through finished copies that I got. So first we have Sorcery of Thorns, which is by Margaret Rogerson. This was from Simon & Schuster. I already talked about this earlier, so we're not going to get into that. Huh. Next we have My Ideal Boyfriend is a Croissant, a novel by Laura Donald. This Very one promising. is from Random House. And it says, what you are reading is a promise between my mom and me. It's my food diary. I have no idea what else this is about, but that is very intriguing. There is a face on her croissant that is... It's her boyfriend. Next we have a very cute cover on this book. It is Maybe This Time by Casey West. This is her latest young adult romantic comedy, I guess I want to say. It is. Um, I'm pretty sure there is some sort of event planning involved in this one, but other than that, I don't know very many details. Some sort of event planning. Then we have Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. This one came in from Avon Books. I have never read a Tessa Bailey book, but this one involves like a fixer upper story also which there's another book i read earlier this year that i was not too impressed with however i have been seeing some of my friends reading and loving this one specifically mel from elzani and jane from it's jane lindsay come to mind so i am very much looking forward to reading it as well then we have the perfect date by evelyn lozada with holly lawrence and this is a sports romance i guess i want to say it's a baseball star and um a single mom that's pretty much all I know about that. The last finished copy that I got was The Voice in My Head by Dana L. Davis. I hadn't heard of this one, but it intrigued me tremendously. It's about twin sisters, and then one of them gets diagnosed with like a terminal oh, illness. That's terrible. And the other sister has a dream, and she starts hearing this voice that tells her that she has to take her sister to some like place because oh, then, the, wow. okay. then the sister like, okay, will be wow, healed. Yeah. So I am both 
terrified and intrigued I, this one, so. Sounds terrifying, absolutely. All right, so that is the end of that section. All righty, now running off our kind of um, well, the stuff, middle grade stuff that we sort of got in the mail. I want to give a brief shout out to Cassie from Simon & Schuster uh, who sort of reached out She's and say, hey, maybe can you can you review this book? And I have reviewed the first book, which is The Revenge of Magic, sort of book one, right? It had a lot of potential, and I did say that, okay, it would be nice to know what happened next. And here it is, The Last Dragon. This actually came from me, and I thought, yay, yeah. book mail. But uh, so thanks, Cassie, for this. We'll definitely read and review. Uh, and so nice to know what actually is going to happen next to our good friend Fort Fitzgerald and uh, his capacity to do mm. more magic than they ever thought he could. Also got in the mail, it's called Iron Magicians, The Search for the Magic Crystals. <laughs> so written by Citrix and illustrated by UEO. Uh, it's from Quirk Books, and it's actually a choose-your-own-adventure graphic novel. The last time I read a, a choose-your-own-adventure novel, I was in like fifth grade, I, I would like to think. You know, and, and even then I was sort of a little angry that the other kids got the Wizards and Warriors series, which is a choose-your-own-adventure, but like you choose to be a wizard or a warrior. So this is pretty much the closest thing I had to that, and the angst is now gone because now I get that in the mail, even if it's not a Wizard and Warrior book. Speaking of warriors, this is The Dragon War Warrior by Katie Zhao. I just there's like a girl and she's got like a spear and there's like a giant dragon. red dragon I'm like yes of course I'll read that just I don't even need to know the back but um, yeah I don't I don't and then finally a finished copy by Melissa Landers uh, of Blast Away now the last time I received anything that looked like this was called Sanity in Tallulah and I say I I mean her because they sent it to her and it's about two kids on a space station and uh, you know Princess Sparkle Destroyer of Worlds uh, was their little science project and um, now it seems like it's a bunch of it's a couple of kids on a space station as well. So it looks like they're stuck, and I guess this is just them trying to get go kids into this. In so space. kids in space. It's one of those things. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll read that and relive the childhood that I wished I could have had with friends. So this is it. I got this Nora Roberts book in the mail. It's called Undercurrents. This Ooh. came from Big Honcho and St. Martin's Press. I'm going to read the back to you because I don't actually know anything about it. So, in a beautifully kept house in North Carolina's Blue Ridge Mountains, young Zane Bigelow feels like a prisoner of war. Outsiders see his parents as a successful surgeon and a stylish wife until one brutal night when the family's facade shatters and oh, gives Zane a chance to break free and begin a new life. It's terrible. Ooh. Sounds dark, uh, but as he grows into manhood and builds a hopeful future, the darkness of his past will once again threaten his safety and test his strength to defend the ones he loves. Uh -oh. dot, dot, dot. Then we have a couple of things from Macmillan. So first we have Light It Up, which is by Kekla Magoon. This story is about the murder of a young girl, a police officer shooting a 13-year-old girl oh, who terrible. is unarmed. And so it's an exploration of that from multiple viewpoints. Then we have a book I'm super excited about that's Into the Crooked Place by Alexandra Cristo. This is her second book. I loved her debut to Kill a Kingdom so much last year. This is a complete departure from that fairy tale retelling of hers. This one is more like Six of Crows-ish, sort of. Because, okay, it says, the streets of, I don't even know how to pronounce this, crazy? Yeah, are for the deadly and the dreamers, and four crooks in particular know just how much magic they need up their sleeves to survive. So, so there's dark magic, there are four different characters in this one. I mean, I, I'm ready. I'm ready. So. Actually, funny story, you guys might have already seen this book. No, you guys definitely have seen this book in my book expo book con, in our book expo and book con all. So, we're actually going to do a giveaway because we have two more copies of. There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. So there's this one. And then there is this one that came in this box, which is pretty cool. This is basically a story that starts with the end of the world. So wow. the apocalypse is happening in it. And there are a few characters. So there's a prince exiled from his kingdom, a ruthless killer known as the Pale Hand, a once faithful leader torn between his duty and his heart, a reckless gambler with the power to find anything or anyone, and a dying girl on the verge of giving up. So one of them could save the world. Or, or break, break it. it. And it sounds so interesting. I love that there is a Greek mythology spin to it too. Oh, that is another nice. thing that's a big part in the story. Very so, nice. if you want to enter to win a advanced reading copy of There Will Come in Darkness, there will be a link to a raffle copter form down below. Unfortunately, the giveaway is going to be US only at this point because... Reasons. Reasons. If you guys will enter it, hope you guys are excited to read it too. From Simon and from Cassie also, she actually sent me a book that I am so excited about. It is called Our Wayward Fates by Gloria Chow. Gloria Chow is the author of a book I loved last year uh, called American Panda. Uh, I, you know, honestly, I'll be honest, I didn't even need to know what this story was about. I was just like, it's a Gloria Chow book, I will happily read it. So, 
It is basically a contemporary story, but there are snippets of this like Chinese legend called the Butterfly Lover. The main character, Ali, is the only Asian girl at her school in Indiana, which is not too surprising. Then she actually finds out that there is a new kid and he is also Asian. He just happens to be Taiwanese <laughs> as well. And so they technically have chemistry because they, I mean, I guess it's partly like draws to life, but also they find something in each other that you know, is yeah, very there's attractive. some gen genuine attraction um, there. But then when her mom finds out about their relationship, she's like, no, veto, cannot do Interesting. it. Interesting. Um, and then she finds out a little bit more about her own family's history and a couple of secrets that are the reason her mom is saying this. And so it is that modern day viewpoint with snippets of that fairy tale, of a folk tale called The Butterfly Lovers, and that's going to be so good, so interesting, cannot wait to read it. And then we have two books from Wednesday Books. The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrian Young. This is the companion sequel to The Sky in the Deep. This one is about the brother in Sky in the Deep, actually. I don't even care like what the plot of his story is, because that brother was such a delightful secondary character in the other book that I am really expecting to love him in this book. Plus, look at this cover. Like, it's gorgeous, this actually. Cover. It's really great. And I also have this arc of Diamond City. Uh, it's about an 18 year old professional assassin with a bounty on her head. Wow. It's not set in like an epic fantasy world, it's set in sort of like an industrial wasteland type world. Oh yeah, sure. A good things don't happen to girls who come from nothing unless they risk everything. Wow, I like dun, that's a good dun, word. That's a good word. I, I like love it. it. I'm like so it. excited. And then we have two books from Berkeley. There is Faker by Sarah Smith, who apparently is Filipino American. So cool ready, loving for it. So this one is basically about two office like co-workers. Ah, uh, it's an office romance, fair. Like, it's sort of an office romance. Of course they don't get along because you know differences. They love to hate office romance. They're romances. forced to work on a project, project together of course, and so yeah. feelings develop. I think she might actually be Filipino, the main character, because her last name seems Filipino. It sounds real good. And then we have the Bromance Book Club. The main character in this one is actually a guy and he is having marriage problems. A solution he finds to this marriage problem, or a potential solution, is that he joins this romance book club that's all guys. And they actually read romance novels. And I'm living, just that that's alone, just so I am funny. living for it. So like that anyway, all right, fine. <laughs> I mean, they, their first read is a steamy Regency novel titled Courting the Countess. I mean, come Courting on! Courting the I, Countess! I can't, so. What are they gonna get pointers? Do they even look like counts? And the last book I'm gonna mention is from Orbit. Uh, very thankful to Paula for sending this to me. This is the 10,000 Door Doors. This is the 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. It is about a main character named January, and she is a ward for some rich dude, and she basically feels neglected a little bit in the mansion that she lives in, but then she finds a book, and the book sort of has secrets about other worlds that, Ooh. you know, she is going to discover throughout the course of this portal month. And story. I cannot wait. I love portal stories so it much. Is a portal also, story. this has an incredible cover. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Oh, we finally made it, guys. We made it to the yes, end. Yes, we did. We, we shall celebrate with some champions. Pocky. <laughs> and so, on that note, we would like to thank everybody for you all know, of the books. All of the books. We're so glad that you guys were able to last this long throughout the entire thing. We are celebrating with Pocky, obviously. Pocky. So, let us know in the comments below if you got anything like to add or if there's like another book out there that we might have missed or we should totally get uh, and, and totally haul next time we're open to suggestions not just books anime anything reading really. anything really as long as it's fun and it's a great story we're there so it, well you guys know my type so <laughs> i'm counting on you and on that note we bid this haul goodbye and you all as well and we'll uh, see, we'll you see you next time. time bye, bye.